Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a blessed day to be able to be together. Because when last we saw Jesus on Good Friday, he was dead. There was no way, no way around it. No doubt about it. And yet on Easter, Christ lives, and that changes everything. We're thankful that you're here today, and we're thankful that you believe that truth. And what a reason to come together to praise God, whether we're in person or online. We welcome you. My name is Pastor Scott Ilhoffen. I'll be your worship leader. My associate pastor, Tim Smith, will, will have the sermon today. And we welcome all of you here to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Today we worship Jesus as we follow the festival order of service that's in your bulletin. It'll also be up on the screen. Sometime in the service, we ask that you please fill out the connection card, either electronically or also in the cards in the pew, and just leave those cards there, or you can drop them off in the offering box when you leave. We're glad that you're here to worship God, so let's praise his name as we sing the opening hymn, hymn number 438. May God bless your worship with us.
If you're able, please stand. We confess our resurrection faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made his salvation known. And revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love. And his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen. The salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. With the harp and the sound of singing, we pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we, who have been raised with him through baptism, may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson for this Easter Sunday is recorded for us in the Old Testament book of Job, reading from chapter 19, beginning at verse 23. Job confesses his resurrection faith, that he knows that his Redeemer lives. We now, through the eyes of faith, have seen Jesus alive through the pages of Holy Scripture, and what joy this sweet sentence gives, I know that my Redeemer lives. Here is the word. Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead, or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end, he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. This is the word of, the, of God. We now join to sing the Easter Psalm, Easter uh, Psalm 118. The choir will sing the psalm and the congregation will join in singing the refrains.
If you're able, please stand. The Easter Gospel appointed for this special day is recorded for us in the action writer, Go the Gospel of Mark, reading from chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. We hear the first person account. What happened that first Easter Sunday? Jesus lives. This is what Mark says. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. The mixed choir will now sing, and after their anthem, we join together to sing the hymn of the day, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. And during the fourth verse of that, of that hymn, we invite the children to come forward to the steps. Pastor Smith has a children's sermon for you.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I want to talk about Jesus rising from the dead, and I don't know if the tomb looked exactly like that, uh, or if the stone looked exactly like that, or if the flowers looked exactly like that, but you look back there and you see that something's missing from that grave. What's missing? Jesus, that's right. He's not there, right? And there are different things that God gives us to remind us that Jesus rose, like what's behind you there? Flowers. Flowers are starting to grow and come up, reminding us that life comes back again, and that just as Jesus rose, we will rise too. I'm going to come back to that sentence, but I want you to look at the windows. You see the windows around the church, wherever they are, you see that on the bottoms of the windows below the pictures and above them are in kind of a greenish yellow area are flowers, aren't there? And some of them look a little odd and they look a little bit funny and some of them look like they're swirling around like a big old capital letter S. I'm Pastor Smith, I always think of that. But they're really depictions, depictions of uh, Easter lilies and flowers like that that grow to remind us of the resurrection of Jesus. Because Jesus rose, I will rise. Can you say that with me? Jesus rose, I will rise. Again, Jesus rose, I will rise. That's the point I want you to remember when you go home today, that because Jesus rose, I will rise from the dead. That's right. Jesus paid the price for all of our sins on the cross, and because he rose, I will rise. And of course, one last thing. After church today, you see back in the, in the grave again, do you see that on top of the bench, there's a basket with some things in there? I think there's enough for just about everybody, or at least one for every family. There, uh, one of our newer members, one of our newest members actually, gave little presents, and it's a little uh, a bag, and in there is a little Jesus and a little prayer. And it's the Lord's Prayer. And you can take that home with you uh, when you go home today. Come up after church and grab one. I'm sure you'll probably come up, because what mom and dad doesn't want to take a picture in front of the tomb on Easter Sunday. But then grab one of those too. Let's remember our point one more time. Because Jesus rose, I will rise. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you sent Jesus to take away all of my sins. And because Jesus rose, I will rise. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats and we'll finish our hymn.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the word of God for meditation on this Easter Sunday is a short text from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. Peter writes, For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. This is the word of the Lord. In the Apostles' Creed, we confess, He descended into hell. The third day, He rose again from the dead. And this is the simple Easter message for us. Peter puts it this way, he was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. Jesus rose from the dead. He is risen. And the marvelous result of Easter and the resurrection of Jesus is, first of all, that Jesus accomplished exactly what he said and promised he would accomplish. The forgiveness of our sins. And second of all, that God the Father accepted all of the work of his son Jesus Christ, not leaving him in the grave, but raising him from the dead. And that means that we can be certain that the obedient life of Jesus, keeping all of God's commands, stands in place of our poor deeds, our sinful deeds, our absent deeds, and Christ gave up his life on the cross to pay the penalty for all of our sins. That's what Peter means when he said Christ died for sins once for all means that there is now no more penalty, no more payment to be made by anyone ever. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is very much like the first robin of springtime. But Jesus doesn't just, doesn't just tell us with his resurrection that it's the spring of the year, which it is, but that something else is coming. The resurrection is coming. As Jesus rose, I will rise. And, you know, here in Minnesota, at least in this part of Minnesota, sometimes aren't there robins? kind of around all year long, around even in the winter time lately. And, and that also reminds us something, that by trusting in Jesus, we remember that that comfort is always with us, always there to guide our godly living. All of these things, Peter tells us, were done to bring you to God. You, Christian, you, believer, you here sitting, listening right now. The life of Jesus is the gospel, and the gospel plants faith and grows faith in our hearts. And by trusting in Jesus, we are carried home to our Father in heaven, and Jesus is the one who opened the way. Peter writes, he was made alive. But what exactly does that mean? He was made alive. Is, is Jesus alive simply as a, as a spirit somewhere uh, and, and, and that's all there is to it? Or is he alive as a, as a good memory? Or is he alive as a good example? Well, all of those things fall short of the truth. That's not nearly enough. This morning, when it was still dark, I remembered to put a roast in the slow cooker and, and all of the things that were there. I left myself a message to remind me. I left the bay leaves on the stove next to the vitamins. And there it was. And I got it. And, and right now, I, I think that the, that slow cooker is probably beginning to fill the house with the scent of the aroma of what will... Be. I suppose you're all going to show up in my house for supper now, aren't you? <laughs> and... But the aroma is not what fills us up. These things that some people imagine about Jesus' resurrection are not what nourishes our faith, are not what fills us up. Because the truth is, he was made alive 
means that Jesus' dead body came to life and he remains alive today and he is ascended into heaven and we will be with him body and soul in him body and soul in us forever in heaven and Peter continues he went and preached to the spirits in prison now a couple of you are remembering to take notes for catechism class and a couple of you now are going to get them out. It's, it's there in the booklet. It's not a tall bookmark, but it's just an ordinary sideways piece of paper. But if you're going to take notes, it might help to make a reference here, and, and for, for many of us, to Colossians 2.15. Because just as this passage in Peter talks about Jesus' descent into hell, that verse in Colossians 2 also talks about the descent. And Colossians 2.15 says that having disarmed the powers and authorities, Jesus made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And based on these passages especially, but many others as well, we learn that Jesus early, and we believe and teach, that early, very early on Easter Sunday, Jesus came alive once again. His spirit, which in death had left his body briefly and went back to the Father in heaven, now returned to his flesh. And just as God says in, 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 in Genesis, he breathed into the nostrils the breath of life. This now happened with Jesus. His lungs <gasps> filled once again. His heart began beating once again. His eyes opened once again. And he was alive, a living being who remains alive now. And then, in this body, Jesus' glorified body, he now descended into hell, right out of the grave, right down to the prison of the damned. Now, he had already suffered pain on the cross. He did not suffer now. That's not why he descended into hell. And he proves this because on the cross, Jesus proclaimed that the work of suffering for, for our sins was what? He said, it is finished. John 19, 30. And therefore, he did not descend into hell on Easter to suffer, but to preach. Now, the word preach often implies proclaiming the gospel to save souls to turn people away from sin to repentance and to produce faith and to save sinners. That's not what Jesus did when he descended into hell to preach. For Jesus also said about those who are in hell, this is in Luke 16, between heaven and hell, a great chasm has been put in place so that even if someone wanted to go from from heaven to hell, they cannot, nor can anyone ever cross over from hell to heaven. That's Luke 16, 26. Well, when he went there, who did he preach to? He preached to everyone who was there, the devil and his demons. Those are the, the fallen angels who fell with him. Luther calls them the goblins. I love reading Luther. Uh, uh, it's, it's just a hoot sometimes. And, uh, and also, however, all of those men and women from all of human history who died without faith in Christ. Peter, a little bit later, gives the example of all of those who had died in the flood in the days of Noah. They all died without faith in Christ. They perished horribly. For just as faith alone saves... Mark 16, 16 tells us that only unbelief damns. Well, so what did Jesus preach about in hell? Well, Paul tells us in the Colossians passage that this was a triumph. Now, that's a special word that they used in ancient times uh, to talk about a, a, a victor, usually of a war or at least a battle, who would demonstrate his success by marching or parading the vanquished uh, uh, along with him. And they were chained and they were helpless, 
But uh, uh, Luke 16 also tells us that those who are in hell, as part of their punishment for unbelief, still do not understand faith. They don't understand grace. They don't get Christ's work. They don't understand the only way to heaven. They still have it wrong. And therefore, those things anyway would do them no good. But Jesus entered hell to announce and to convince them that he, Jesus, is the Savior, the only Savior, and he's the one that they rejected. And denying him was and is the reason for their condemnation, their penalty, and their continuing and, yes, eternal suffering there in hell. As far back as the Garden of Eden, God had proclaimed this and promised it. At that time, God told the devil, I'm going to put enmity, hatred, between you, devil, and the woman, and between your seed, that is unbelievers, and her seed, that is Christ. He's going to crush your head, Satan. And yes, you will strike his heel. You'll hurt him uh, 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 somewhat. But, well, Satan, guess what's just happened? Dr. Jesus has arrived, entered hell, to give you the final prognosis. Even though you want to deny it, your head is crushed, bashed in by the cross of Jesus Christ. This, this whole doctrine of Jesus' descent into hell teaches us that, for one thing, hell is certainly real. It's a moment of, of, of preaching that is up for us to know about, but the words are not given to us. And so the actual message Jesus proclaimed does not have to be for our ears, but it certainly proclaims uh, something that is for our understanding in Scripture. It teaches us that hell is the real prison for all who reject Christ. Therefore, we, everyone is certainly right to be afraid of hell to be terrified of its punishments. And therefore, this is part of God's way for you and me of calling out to us, stop sinning. End your sinful lifestyle. So many in hell once knew about Christ. Some of them knew him in person or they heard God the Father in the Old Testament testify about him and, and proclaim him. Cain, Saul, Judas, Korah, Dathan, Abiram, and, and many others heard the word of God, sat in God's congregation, but did not trust, did not put their faith in Jesus Christ. So God's call continues, turn from your sins, trust in Jesus alone for forgiveness, and leave your sinful lifestyle and actions behind. Second, Jesus descending into hell also teaches us and reminds us that his work of salvation is complete. There is nothing more to be done ever. All of us with faith in Jesus will never taste the punishment of hell. And the Bible teaches us clearly that there is no other destination for the dead. There is only hell for the unbeliever and heaven for the believer. There is no middle ground. There is nothing else. There is no way to cross from anywhere into heaven apart from Jesus Christ crucified and risen for us. Because he rose, I will rise. When you and I one day close our eyes in death, we will open the eyes of our spirit immediately and without delay and be, as for our souls, in heaven. And then on the last day, our souls will be reunited with our resurrected bodies and then our bodies will also ascend into heaven. Jesus, the first Robin of the springtime of the resurrection, proves the resurrection for us all. First, his resurrection was the natural consequence of his obedient suffering and death. Second, 
It was impossible for Jesus' body to remain in death, and therefore his resurrection is the supreme proof of his divinity. He is truly God. Third, Jesus often and repeatedly re re referred to his resurrection as the ultimate proof of his messiahship, that he is the Christ. Fourth, the resurrection of Jesus is the unshakable witness of the salvation, the justification, the being declared not guilty of all mankind because he offered and gave his life for us all and then rose from the dead. His work is complete and as Paul says in Romans 4, he was raised to life for our justification. And fifth, the resurrection of Jesus rising from the dead is the basis for all Christian faith. It gives us the assurance of the salvation of our bodies and souls. In Jesus alone, your sins are forgiven. You have peace with God and you have a place in heaven prepared in advance for you. Because he lives, you too shall live risen just like Jesus to life, the first Robin of the springtime of the resurrection. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends our understanding guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We continue with him 445.
we pray. Heavenly Father, you have not forsaken us or left us to our own destruction, but kept your ancient promise to send a Savior. We praise you for his perfect life, his innocent death, and his glorious resurrection. Because of your faithfulness to your promises, today is a day of victory. Savior Jesus, we praise you for carrying out God's plan of salvation. Your resurrection is undeniable evidence that you have triumphed over sin, death, hell, and the devil. Because of your resurrection, today is a day of victory. Holy Spirit, we praise you that through the gospel you have led us to know and believe that Jesus is our risen Savior. Today, we say confidently, as did the angel, he is not here, he has risen. Preserve us in faith, raise us to newness of life. Use us to share the message of the empty tomb so that others too may rejoice in Jesus' Easter victory. Lord, bless little Clara Martins, whose baptism we affirm today at the 11 o'clock service. Keep her in your loving care all the days of her life, and bless her parents as they raise her in your word and in your way. We ask your special care for our sister, Sherry Portner, who has undergone emergency surgeries. Bless the skills and wisdom of her medical team. Grant her health and healing according to your will. Lord, we ask that you be with Gordy Kelbs, who has been hospitalized and is undergoing tests. Be his shield and great reward. Restore him according to your divine will and grant him an extra measure of your spirit to trust your promises. Bless our teacher, Phil Scriver, who has undergone brain surgery and is now home. Guide and bless all who attend him and grant him a full recovery. Bless the family of John Roloff, whom you have suddenly called home to heaven. Comfort his family with the certainty of life with you forever in glory. And bless, Lord, our members who are holding divine calls, Jeff and Carol Shanehair, Sarah Spike and Mike Plucker. Be with their families, give them wisdom and peace as they decide between serving here or there. Thanks be to you, O Lord, for giving us the victory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we further join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive with resurrection faith the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. We close our worship today as we sing the final posted hymn.
One final welcome this Easter morn. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus can't hear that enough. What victory shouts we get to make today because he lives indeed. We welcome all of you, and especially not only do we welcome our St. Paul's members, our MLC students, but I see we have a number of guests here this morning, and we welcome you too. If you're a guest, please introduce yourself to Pastor Smith or myself. We'd enjoy meeting you. The announcements for the week are printed in the bulletin. God bless your Easter week. 